Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how we can make multi-dimensional native arrays in Unity. Now this is extremely useful if you're implementing Unity's entity component system. If you've ever tried to use any of the native containers such as native arrays or native lists, you may notice that you get this warning that basically says that you can't have native containers of native containers. Now, sometimes it is nice for us to have multi-dimensional native arrays. So for example, if we have like a grid of something like this, for example, we want to hold all those things in some sort of native container, yet be able to access different cells um, at specific elements based off of their X, Y coordinates. Now these concepts of course are gonna apply to much more things than just ECS and the native containers they have in there. Of course we can apply these concepts with just regular arrays as well. So anyways, the general concept of this is we're gonna be doing what's called flattening the array. So essentially say we have this two dimensional array here what we're gonna do is we're basically going to flatten the array and treat it as if all of these elements were in just one single one dimensional array all in a line. So you see here that we're starting at the element at position zero, zero, which has an index of zero. Now, as we move up in the Y direction, our index increases to one, to two, to three, just as we expected. And then now we come down to the next column and you'll see that it starts at index four and counts up five, six, and seven. So even though for us as programmers, we're treating this like a two dimensional array, under the hood, everything's actually gonna be stored in a single one dimensional array. Now I have these little sliders and we can kind of play around with the like height and width of the array. And as I move up and down in this direction, you'll see that it's gonna shift around the indexes of where they actually are. So a couple of quick things to point out, of course, when we're gonna be initializing our array, we're gonna to have to specify how many elements our array has. And luckily we can calculate that very simply just by multiplying our grid size in the X and Y directions to get the total number of cells. Also, the one other thing that we do need to keep in mind is the way that we populate the arrays. So I populate the array using nested for loops with the uh, Y values nested under the X values. So that's basically going to populate the Y values first. So that's why you'll see that our index starts at zero. And then as we go up in the Y direction, our index increases. And then we increase in the X direction and then continue incrementing up in the Y direction. Now, depending on your code, it is possible that you may have that flipped. So basically it increases in the X direction first, and then we move up a row and then continues to increase in the X direction here. And so that is going to slightly change how we calculate the values, but it's still the same base ways of accessing it. All right, so this is a simple and silly little example that I came up with to demonstrate these concepts to you. So I basically have this 2D grid of quads that are just assigned random colors. And then whenever I click on it, it just turns the quad red. All right, so here's the code here. Of course, I'll have some links to the relevant stuff in the description below. And you'll see that I'm using both a 2D array for our renderers, as well as a native array of colors. So in the start function here, we can go ahead and allocate memory for our renderers just using the uh, grid size.x and grid size.y. And then when we wanna allocate our native array, of course, this has to be a one dimensional native array. So we're going to uh, allocate it based off of the number of total quads. And again, we're just calculating the number of total quads based off of grid size.x multiplied by grid size.y. All right, so here's the spawn quads function. And like I mentioned, I do have nested for loops. Like I said, I'm starting with the X axis and then I have the Y axis nested under it because again, the order that you have these does matter in when you go to actually calculate um, the different indices. So now here, I'm just gonna go ahead and spawn a new quad and then I'm gonna get the quad renderer off that and just set the uh, color of that to this new random color here. And then I'm actually gonna store that quad renderer inside our renderers um, two-dimensional array at position X, Y. So that's just kind of normally how we'd access a 2D array. However, I'm actually gonna store the color inside this colors native array. And to do that, we have to find the flat index. So like I said, we need to flatten the array. And when we do that, we actually have to calculate the flat index. So I do that using these coordinates to flat index function. And it basically just takes in a vector two int for the X, Y position. And it also takes in a value for the total height of the grid. So we can just pass in grid size dot Y. So here's that function here. You'll see that it's extremely simple. Again, it just takes in the cell index as well as the height of the grid. And then we just return height multiplied by cell index dot X 
and then we add in cell index dot y. So that's going to calculate the single integer value, which is how we can access an element of a 2D array inside of a one dimensional array. Now, like I mentioned, if you do have those nested for loops flipped and you're doing the y before the x, um, then you basically just need to calculate it using the width instead. So you are going to return the width multiplied by cell index dot y and then you add in the cell index dot x. So you basically just kind of flip them around and you use width instead of height. So you basically would be passing in the total width of the grid instead of the total height of the grid. Now the other thing that I'm doing is when you click on a cell, basically I'm getting the cell index from the world position that I click on, just a simple little helper function that I've created. And again, we're gonna calculate the flat index using the coordinates to flat index function. And then in there, I'm gonna set the colors at position flat index to red, which doesn't actually change the color of the quad just yet, because now we need to go and actually access this. Now, ignoring the fact that we already have calculated the cell index here, I've created another helper function that takes that flat index and converts it into coordinates on the grid. So the flat index to coordinates, again, it just takes in a flat index as well as uh, the grid size dot y, so the height of the grid. So here's that function here. And basically we're just gonna create a new vector two int called coordinates. And then we'll set x equal to flat index divided by height. And we're gonna set y equal to the remainder of flat index divided by height. So we just use that little percent symbol there. And then that's going to convert the flat index back into coordinates which we can use to access our renderer's two dimensional array. And so that is where I actually set the color. Um, and then we just, again, access the color using colors at position flat index. And then again, if you do have the X and Y flipped, you're gonna need to take in the width for this function. And then you're gonna set X equal to the remainder of flat index divided by width, and then Y equal to flat index divided by width. So you just kind of flip them around and use the width instead. So once again, we can just click on any single cell within this uh, two dimensional grid. And again, it's gonna be accessing um, some certain things within a one dimensional native array that contains values for all these cells. So once again, that's how we can use 2D native arrays, which again is extremely helpful for using it in the Unity's entity component system, as well as other times that we may want to use a 2D array flattened down into a single dimensional array. And this does work for more than just 2D arrays. You can apply these concepts to 3D arrays and 4D arrays and so on, so long as you do calculate everything properly. So anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on game development topics. Of course, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.